Hey guys, it's the Aussie Gamer here, and today I'll be breaking down the recent info regarding Forza Horizon 5's system requirements. So, let's get into it. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel for more Forza Horizon 5 news and gameplay, then make sure you do. If you have subbed, you are awesome, and if you haven't, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, after a long wait, they have all the information provided for the requirements on PC. The chart they have now provided showcases the minimum, recommended, and ideal specs for the game. After this, I'll also be detailing the supported wheel setups now provided too. So across the board, you'll need Windows 10 build 1909 from November 2019, it's highly likely everyone watching this is on Windows 10 with a build much newer. If not, it's time to update. So starting on the minimum specs on the CPU side, for AMD, we have a Ryzen 3 1200. This is a quad core quad thread. With the GPU, we have an RX 470, which has four gigabytes of VRAM, which is also the minimum supported. For regular memory, it says eight gigabytes, but honestly, if you can, just get more because it'll make this so much more stable to play. With storage, across the board, it is 110 gigabytes, but on minimum, it says a hard disk drive. With the NVIDIA slash Intel side of things, we have an Intel i5-4460. This is a quad-core, quad-thread CPU. And with the GPU, we have a GTX 970, which says recommended four gigabytes of VRAM. The thing is though, this card does not have four gigabytes of VRAM. It has 3.5 gigabytes. So yeah, that's a bit of a stuff up on their end. The same here, it is a minimum of eight gigabytes of system memory and 110 gigabytes of the full game. For the recommended system requirements, we are beefing it up a little Little bit for the CPU side of AMD we have a Ryzen 5 1500X this is a six core 12 threaded CPU with the GPU we have an RX 590 and the recommended VRAM for this is eight gigabytes now that is quite a lot compared to our other counterparts in the minimum spec so yeah you're gonna have to get something obviously like an RX 590 for the system memory we have 16 gigabytes that's much more like it and same across the board, it's 110 gigabytes for the game. With the Nvidia slash Intel side of things, we have an i5-8400 for the CPU. I know this one quite well. I used to have one in my old system and it was pretty good. It's six cores and six threads, boosts up to four gigahertz. Not a bad one at all. With the GPU side of things, we have a GTX 1070 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. So you with your trusty old 1060s, <laughs> I don't want to say it, but it might be time to upgrade. With system memory, it's the same, 16 gigabytes and 110 gigs of storage. Now for the ideal spec, this really does kick it up a notch. So yeah, you want a strong one for this. With the CPU side on AMD, we have a Ryzen 7 3800 XT. Surprised it's not like a 5800X, but oh well. For the GPU, we have an RX 6800 XT and the VRAM says 16 gigabytes, which is quite a lot. And um, hopefully it doesn't use all that much because I know the games like Cyberpunk definitely do. For system memory, it's also 16 gigabytes, which kind of surprises me. I actually thought there would be more for here, especially with a game of this generation with examples of having a higher draw distance, which, yeah, kind of weird for me. And for the storage on this, it actually explains having 110 gigs on an SSD, not on a hard disk drive this time. On the Intel slash NVIDIA side, we have a i7-10700K. This is an eight core 16 thread CPU. It's actually the same as the Ryzen 7. So yeah, same amount of cores and threads. The supported GPU for this is an RTX 3080, which definitely is on the beefy side of things. But what is very interesting is that the VRAM supported on this side is 10 gigabytes. It's not 16 gigabytes like the AMD one. Now this is because the RTX 3080 usually comes with 10 gigabytes. The 3080 Ti does get more. Um, there's also a specific Unicorn one that gets 20 gigabytes, but that's very rare too. And the system memory is the same at 16 gigabytes. We also see an SSD being wanted for the storage at 110 gigs. And there you have it. Those are the system requirements detailed for Forza Horizon 5. Now this does get quite low and also quite high. But if you are on the low side of things, it probably won't be too terrible. My only wish is that they would detail the specific resolution and frame rate these are at. Because then I'll be able to know if this will work on my PC better. For example, I'm using 1440p or for it being detailed at 4K. Some things I've picked up in this is that we basically only need max an 8-core CPU. I myself have a 10-core i9 rig. 
You obviously don't need those more cores and threads, but oh well, it probably won't be a massive gain, but it's there for the future. Something that also just really surprises me, as I said before, is we only need 16 gigabytes of memory. For a game in 2021, with the details that are given, with the graphical settings, I really think we need more. And if we don't, then yeah, I will be very chuffed, but myself, I've got 32 gigs in my system, so I know I'll be safe no matter what. Another thing to note is the system requirements actually in the Microsoft Store have been updated. So those lower ones you saw in the past sadly are not the same. So if you were banking on that, you're sadly gonna have to upgrade your PC to run it a bit better. In this whole release of news, we have the supported racing wheels, and I'm going to go through them now. On the Logitech side of things, we we have the original driving force, the G25, the G27, the G29, the G920, the G923 for PlayStation, the G923 for Xbox, and the Momo wheel. Frostmaster has the Ferrari 458, T150 RS, T300 RS, T500 RS, the TMX, TGT, TSXW, TX, TSPC, and for Fantec, we have the V1, V2, V2.5, CSL, DD1, CSL, DD, DD2, and the Universal Hub device. We will also be able to play on 21 by 9 displays, so if you have an ultra wide, you are going to be treated too. So there you have it, the supported system requirements, a new aspect ratio, and supported racing wheels. After seeing these specs, I really wish I had a 3080, but that's not gonna happen in this market. I'm gonna have to stick with my old 2070 Super. It's been in my PC for nearly a year now, and paired with the i9, it's not too bad. Now, if you do want to see more from me, then make sure to subscribe. I'll be covering more F8 Tribe content in the future, so stick around. Anyway, I'll see you later, and peace.